you are Locked On Astros Postcast. Part of Locked On Sports Houston on the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Oh, hello and welcome Astros fans to the very first edition of the Locked On Astros Postcast here on the Locked On Network. We are Locked On Houston Sports. I am Michael Connor. If you have been with me for a period of time, a long period of time, well, I've been doing post games, pre games, post games on the radio forever, and it's now a different world. We're in the locked on world. So excited to be here with Locked On Sports. And what an unfortunate way to start the Locked On Astros postcast tonight as the Astros get absolutely destroyed in their first of 13 matchups this season against the Texas Rangers. Feels like a continuance of the ALCS last year. So much to do to dive into it throughout the show tonight. Thank you for joining us. You can always find us here on this YouTube channel and on the Locked On Astros podcast page. Of course, you should also be listening to that podcast every single day, Monday through Friday. And then you can find the recap or find this show on their page as well as the YouTube page. Hit that subscribe button as well. Tonight's show uh, is brought to you by Price Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to pricepicks.com slash locked on MLB and use code all lowercase locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. So like we've been talking about a disastrous start for the Astros tonight against the Texas Rangers. Nothing good about it. The bats decided to not show up. You thought for a brief second in this ball game, with the way that they came out in the first inning and made a couple of loud outs. Jordan Alvarez with a loud out after Altuve had a great at bat to start the ball game tonight, uh, battling to eight pitches and then getting a single to center field. You think that okay, you have a loud out from Jordan, an immediate loud, almost looking like it was going to be a home run from Kyle Tucker. This is going to be one of those nights. Nah. It's not going to be one of those nights. It turned into one of those typical Astros nights, and it's been feast and famine for this team this year. Now, coming into the ball game tonight, you know, you look at offensive numbers, they look pretty good. You know, they're top in the league in batting average. They're top in the league in home runs. They are there. They have a, a run differential that's in the positive, yet they had a record of two and five entering this one. So they're now two and six. Think about this. Eight games into the season now, this team is one win better than the lowly Oakland Athletics, you know, the team that plays a double-A team every single night. And the Astros get nothing tonight out of the lineup, of course, is a real gut punch early in the ball game. Uh, they're down 5 nothing after two. We've seen this story before. We'll get into the guy that does a lot of the damage because guess what? Astros killer Adolis Garcia strikes again tonight. But we focus on the Astros part of this to start tonight. Hunter Brown, not very good. You need Hunter Brown to be better. This is a team that... We know the question marks, and look, I've not been around. Uh, I've been a little quiet for a period of time, of course, and I'm in my new world now, um, but we've been in a spot where the Astros, or I haven't talked a lot about the Astros publicly. Of course, you can find me, as you see down there on the screen, on a X or Twitter, at Connor Michael is where you find me, um, but I did not talk a lot about what I thought about this team coming into the season. I think they made a massive mistake, first of all, not signing Blake Snell. They needed to sign Blake Snell. They have a issue when it comes to starting pitching depth. And you see that magnified on a night like tonight. Now, they've had a lot of really good starts from guys so far. Look, Christian Javier started the season. Very encouraging. Uh, Framber Valdez survived game one. Very good in game two. Of course, Ronel Blanco throws a no-hitter in his first start. You can't ask for much more. J.P. France is pretty solid uh, that Sunday game against the Yankees. We'll see how he pitches tomorrow. But there is... A problem when you have a guy like this, Hunter Brown, who's just not consistently been good enough. Now, look, you can't throw him away just yet or throw away what you think about this player moving forward because, well, uh, you know, this guy is like 25 years old and he's kind of good and he has stuff and everything. But the problem tonight was the fastball. And we've seen this at times throughout his early big league career. You know, everybody talks about how he looks exactly like Justin Verlander throwing on the mound or. You know, the mechanics are so similar. But the difference with Verlander is the way that he spins the baseball. And when he spins the baseball, it looks to the hitter like it's elevating on the fastball. Hunter Brown's fastball, it might be near 100 miles an hour. It's flat. And those guys hit it. They find it. And we saw it tonight. He could not throw it in a spot to get a strike. 
and he can't be this guy this season. Now, look, I'm not going to overreact to it. You can overreact to a two and six start. I will say for me overall for this team to this point of the season, massively disappointed. I thought that this team would come out with the edge that we saw them come out with in the 2019 season. When the 2018 season fell apart in the postseason, they got beat down by the Red Sox in the ALCS in that season. I thought we'd see them come out with the chip that they had in 2022 when they looked really bad in the World Series against the Braves in lost in six. This is a team that, I mean, look, we can talk about the years that they've lost before. Last year was the biggest choke job that they've ever had, period, end of story. And it was that way because you had the ability to come back home, and it's not the first time that this franchise had done this, to come back home against the Rangers in that ALCS and win one of two games in your ballpark, and you could not do it. They did it again, like I said, again, mentioned against the Nationals. It was embarrassing. And I just expected there to be a serious edge to this team. And I don't feel it yet. I, I hope that it comes around. I hope that the spark gets going. You know, getting guys going into the season is always a difficult thing to do. Uh, you know, I thought Joe Espada's plan that he talked about in spring training was going to be great. You know, play these guys, get them reps. You want them to be ready for the season. You know, that last week, some of those guys really started to click at the plate. And there's just been no consistency to this point anywhere. And that's not even, you know, talking about the middle relief issues for this ball club to this point of the season. Because really, if you're going to go to anything that's, that's, that's bothersome so far, it's that they can't get outs consistently out of the bullpen. Uh, that's been a huge problem for this team. But, you know, tonight I, th I thought was a night where you can set the tone. And we're going to talk about this more before we get out of here in our final segment uh, of the first edition of the Locked on Astros postcast. And again, thank you to all of you joining me. Uh, I know that a lot of you, it's been very nice. A lot of you have been sending me tweets and messages uh, for a while now. I, of course, was all, I've been off Astros post game shows since last August, end of August was uh, when my last post game show came. And uh, it's nice to be back with you all. It's a different version, of course. Again, you will always find it here on YouTube. Uh, you can watch them back after they're done if you miss some of it. And then, of course, on the podcast, the Locked on Astros podcast, anywhere that you get podcasts to do that. Uh, but I just I am really, really disappointed with how this team has come out. I just haven't felt the edge. I haven't felt the spark. And I need to see it. Um, I need to see somebody fire them up somewhere because you cannot continue to dig this hole in this early portion of the season. Now, good news, if you're going to rebound and you're looking to rebound, there's no better time to do it. Even if the opponent is tough, you still have six of your next nine baseball games against the Texas Rangers. And these games are important. We'll talk about that towards the end of this postcast because I do think it is vital for the Astros to go out there and to win the next three ball games this weekend. It's a weird four-game series that wraps around, but they have to find a way to figure this out quickly because flat out, this is unacceptable for the level of expectation that they have had for themselves coming into this season. We'll take a quick breather for a moment. When we return, we're going to talk about the guy that continues to absolutely crush the Houston Astros. He is Mr. Big Head, as some of you on Twitter have been pointing out recently. His name is Adolis Garcia. He is an absolute problem for the Astros, and guess what he was once again tonight? A problem for the Astros. That's next. All right, guys, uh, your health is your wealth. Have you ever heard that before? Well, to have that, now look, I'm a person that likes to take care of myself. I'm in the gym every day. I like to eat well, and a great way for you to eat well, if you're like me, is to get with Factor. That's right, Factor. Great, fresh meals to keep you healthy, to keep you uh, getting to that spot where your health is your wealth. It's no fuss, no mess meals. Factor meals eliminate the hassle prepping, cooking, or cleaning up. We all hate doing the stuff in the kitchen. Me right now, my dishwasher's out. I really hate it, so Factor is a big-time win for me. Uh, simply heat up and savor the delicious food right there in front of you. It's tailored to your schedule. You can customize your weekly meals with flexibility to get as much or as little as you need. Pause or reschedule deliveries to suit your lifestyle. Head to factormeals.com slash locked on MLB and use code locked on MLB 50 to get 50% off your first box 
uh, plus 20% off your next box. That's locked on 50, the code at factormeals.com slash locked on MLB 50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while subs- while your subscription is active. And you know what, guys, when you're talking about uh, how you're going to take in these games, have you learned about prize picks yet? If you haven't, what are you waiting for? Uh, I use prize picks a lot. It's a lot of fun. It makes watching these games so, so much fun. And guess what? Spring training is over and baseball season. Well, yes, it is officially underway, even if it's not been very fun for the Astros so far. Don't miss your chance to add your favorite players from the diamond in your prize pick entries. Whether it's strikeouts, RBIs, or first inning runs, take your pick of more or less and add them to your prize pick entry today. Get in on the playoff action and win up to 100 times your money. And as you uh, would, as, and as the world's best players take the game to the next level, uh, you can be doing that, of course, during the uh, upcoming basketball season. Playoffs begin in April, of course, if you want to get in on that action. And then, of course, all the MLB action. Prize Picks is the place that you absolutely must be going for this. Download the app today and use code Locked On MLB for a first deposit match for up to $100. All right, welcome back to the Locked On Astros post Astros getting crushed tonight. Uh, if you're just joining us, uh, of course, we're going to be doing this almost every single night. There's going to be some games that we won't get to. Uh, Sundays are typically, I would tell you, going to be the games that we take off on this postcast. Uh, I am going to do one this Sunday. So uh, planning on every game for this series, uh, I'll keep you up to date. Of course, you follow me on X at Connor Michael for uh, that. And you can join us every single night. Uh, when the Astros hopefully win some baseball games, because I've done a lot of post game shows throughout my life now, and very lucky to have done so. Done so. Uh, most of them have been wins. Tonight was not a win. Ten two, they dropped to the Rangers, who, by the way, well, they keep winning. And I was a person coming into this season that did not necessarily believe that the Rangers would continue this trend. I think it's very, very obvious on paper when you just put talent to talent, the Astros, and especially with the health situation of the Rangers, the Astros are still the better baseball team. They're not performing like that, flat out. Exactly what happened in the ALCS last year. It's happening again now in the regular season. The Rangers have come out, and they have played way better baseball than the Astros, and they absolutely crushed them tonight. And the guy that absolutely crushed the Astros is Adolis Garcia. And I can't lie to you. Now, this started for the Astros when the Rangers were bad. Garcia used to just destroy them all the time. And unfortunately, the Rangers got good last year, and this has continued. Now, look, I said it earlier. I'm not going to say it out loud. You guys can do whatever you want with your theories on Twitter. I know that you guys like to do that. Um, he's got a big head. That's that's it. He seems to have gotten even bigger from last season. Now, it, it is what it is. I don't, I don't know if that's something that he's doing, whatever it might be. It's just interesting. But he does one thing. He hits the ball over the fence against the Astros constantly, and it's annoying. And I'm trying to wrap my head around it. You know, again, this is the Locked on Astros postcast. We're going to do this for all the Houston teams, by the way. This is not just an Astros thing. Rockets we're going to have. Uh, Of course, we're going to have the Texans, which uh, they're going to be really good. That's going to be a lot of fun this football season. And we're also going to do after U of H Cougar football this year uh, as well. And then when basketball season gets back, uh, hopefully – and we can go for we had plans on starting this when the Cougars got to the final four, but that's not going to happen. Uh, but again, I was going back thinking about it. And I think Adolis Garcia, for me, has probably already cracked my top five of least liked athletes that the Astros have faced. For one, I mean, well, look, we know what happened in the postseason last year. Uh, The Brian Abreu situation is still a joke to this day that it was handled the way it was by the umpires. He wasn't intentionally throwing at Adolis Garcia that day. It was a postseason game that the Astros were trying to win. And reacting the way that he did was ridiculous. The way that the Rangers reacted that way and clearing the benches was also ridiculous. It was great on the Astros to step up and and back their man and everything in that moment. The suspension that Abreu uh, served in that moment was also or to start this season. I should say the two games also ridiculous for a situation that wasn't, but it just, it all led to the fact that you don't like Adolis Garcia. 
And I go back to all the years for me personally, which, by the way, uh, if you are watching live on YouTube, you can send in your comments uh, there in the chat for players that you've hated just as much or, uh, you know, more than Adolis Garcia. Because, again, I think he's he's right on up there throughout the years. Um, Astros wise, Jim Edmonds was always a great one. I could not deal with Jim Edmonds back in the day. Um, you know, I just it, it was nothing that I ever wanted to see. I just wanted to punch him anytime I felt like he came up to the plate for the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, when it comes to the Texans, we all know that Cortland Finnegan forever was a was a great one that you hated. Rockets wise, there's a lot. Um, you know, Tim Duncan, basically any spur because Manny Ginobili flopping all over the place. But to keep it Astros centric, you know, I, I think that Adolis Garcia has pushed his way right up there. Of course, Yankees players are always going to to hold a special place, whether it's Aaron Judge, Juan Soto. Oh, God, Juan Soto. Already had to deal with that, didn't we? And, uh, guys, did you know Juan Soto is still like 25 years old or something? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Joe Buck, for that one. So it would be nice if one day the Astros could get Adolis Garcia out where he's not hitting the ball. defense. Now, look, he's not a great hitter. He's never been a great hitter. He's a guy that is going to, you know, hit low batting average, get on base enough, and strike out a lot. But boy, oh boy, when he connects, he connects. And for some reason, he finds his way into connecting against the Astros all the time. Um, I don't know why you even throw it to him. Now, you can't completely go through that lineup. As much as I might not like the Rangers and what they have and how I feel like, you know, their talent level isn't to the level of the Astros this season. Um, I think that you can't go through that lineup and just, you know, walk, work around guys. And Garcia is prime factor number one because they'll put some guys on base in front of him, and when they put guys on base, he's going to crank the ball for a three-run home run. We saw it tonight. Um, it just absolutely stinks. But I would consider it if I was Joe Espada, who, by the way, I don't think has had – the best of starts to his managerial career to this point. Uh, it hasn't been horrific by any means, um, but I think that it hasn't been great overall. There's been some decisions. I think he's been a little bit uh, too trigger happy at times, but I'm not going to complain overall by, about a manager playing the matchups and playing the numbers as much as he has. Per, try to put your players in the best spots that you could win. Something we've all you know struggled with and really – complained about during the Dusty Baker era was, you know, Dusty doesn't do this, Dusty doesn't do that, Dusty doesn't like the analytics, whatever it might be. So I'm not going to complain too much about Joe Espada's start. He, like everybody else, has to ease into the season. They have to find their groove. Um, but you got to start it quickly. Uh, we did get one question before we get to our, our next little brief stop here. The When is it time to become worried? I, you know, I, I think it's fair to be concerned. I, I'm not going to tell you that you shouldn't be worried worried at this point. I would not use the word worry for me at this point. Now, if they keep throwing to Adolis Garcia, maybe I'll be a little bit more concerned that the Astros won't figure this out this season. Like That would be a very real problem at this point, but I just don't think that it's time to hit the panic button, the worry button. Give it, you know, you, got, you almost... You almost have to give it into May, which is, which is nuts to think. I mean, we've seen so many teams in the past do this. Uh, we've seen Astros teams, 4 5 Those teams lollygag their way through the season. I mean, hell, the 5 team was 15-30. Look at the team that beat the Astros in the 2019 World Series. The Nationals, they were god-awful for like half the season, like below 500. And before you know it, they're a playoff team. So you can't worry too much. You just don't like some of the trends, and you don't want to see some of the trends continue. And if they get into May and those trends continue, then I think you try to, you know, you get to that point where, you start to worry a little bit. Uh, but again, if they don't throw to Dolis Garcia for six or the next six times that they see this Rangers team over the next nine games, maybe they'll be okay. We'll talk more about the, this series. There's three games remaining in it, all of them night games, by the way, uh, for this Astros Rangers series. I'm going to tell you when we get back in just a second why I think the Astros absolutely must. They cannot do anything other than then win these next three games. And I'll tell you why next. 
Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right. No cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to the I, to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. Now it's time, of course, for some legal info. Claim as of quarter one, 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risks, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% match on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing hood standing robin hood financial llc member sipc a registered broker dealer all right our final few moments of the first locked on astros po- uh, postcast of course you can hear this po- postcast after it's done with the locked on astros podcast page that is where you'll find them on all the channels whether it's locked on astros locked on rockets locked on texans locked on cougs these will be available in audio form wherever you get your uh, podcasts on those pages so this is the locked on astros postcast you can be watching it live of course on youtube uh you need to hit that subscribe button please pretty please i don't ask a lot of you it doesn't take long when you're on your youtube account to hit the subscribe button. It helps me. It helps you. It helps the world spread the word of the Locked On Astros postcast. And hopefully at some point we will have, I don't know, something good to talk about, like a win after getting shellacked 10-2 to two tonight. It's been a lot of that this season. I pulled up the game-by-game game for the Astros here. And just real quick, 5-4 first game. Okay, whatever. Then you lose the next night 7-1. That sucked. 5-3, 3-4, win 10 nothing, lose 2-1, win 8 nothing, and then lose 10-2. to two. Can they find a middle ground, please? Please. I don't know what's worse, getting killed like this tonight or having all those tough, close losses you know, to a team like the Yankees or having that brutal 2-1 loss to the Blue Jays. I think it's this because this team isn't a team that should get their butts kicked consistently, and when you are playing – where you're taking out Alex Bregman and you're taking out Jose Altuve in the middle of the game, that's a problem. Which, by the way, um, I'm going to give him through tomorrow night before I go in on it completely. We'll see how tomorrow goes for him. Um, can can it's Again, it's eight games. Uh, and I did this last year if you listen to uh, uh, the post-game shows. Can Alex Bregman do something, please? Please? I know that he's never been good in April or even May for that, you know, to that extent. But can he do something for a man that wants as much money as he's trying to get this offseason? I'm just saying. Uh, but these next three games for the Astros against the Rangers are and they're absolutely vital. I, I think that that's the only way to put it. You don't want to put too much emphasis on a game that is in the in what's today, April 5th, tomorrow's April. So April 6th, 7th, and 8th. You can't put too much of an emphasis on it. But you have to put – some real pressure on it. I am hopeful that Joe Espada went in there maybe tonight and closed the door to the clubhouse and, and not necessarily yelled at them, but gave the message that they, they maybe need to hear. Because as I mentioned earlier in the postcast, I don't think that they've come out and played with the spark that we typically see from this baseball club or play with that edge that I was really thinking that they would come out with this year, you know, with their hair on fire based off of the way that last season ended. But they need to get these next three games. For one, they've always played well in Arlington. And in this ballpark, they have typically destroyed the Rangers. Their bats go off in that place. Why didn't they do that tonight? Again, the first inning, they had a couple of really loud, hard outs. Jordan, deep fly ball that, you know, kind of for a second you think is going to get out. Like Kyle Tucker's, I really thought was going to go off the bat, but it didn't. It was another warning track shot there. So you were thinking that it was going to continue to happen. Now, look, you can't 
completely say that the Astros hitters didn't do anything. You have to tip your cap, of course, to the other side. And when you know their pitcher goes out there and does what he does, which I guess you could look at Cody Bradford and go, really? You're getting crushed by Cody Bradford, a team, especially a team, the Astros, that normally crushes left-handed pitching. Um, you know, I, I – I, I don't know what happened, but I'll give them the I'll give them these games. But the emphasis on these games, these three games against the Rangers, matters because, as we've mentioned, seven of ten in this stretch. Which MLB schedule makers are so stupid for this. Why would you schedule this rivalry seven times of the thirteen that they're playing in the first month of the season? Why wouldn't you? Okay, you could sprinkle one in early. Why wouldn't you backload these? when the division race is tight and when it could be hot and all like, I just, I don't understand, but I'm not an MLB schedule maker, so I don't get to make these decisions. I just think it's dumb. But when you play more than half of your games against what looks like going to be your biggest problem again in the division this year, I don't know about the Mariners yet. They're doing Mariners things where they start slow. They don't look great. And, you know, they'll probably get their act together around June and be above 500 again. But you cannot fart around in these baseball games. I'm not going to play the disaster scenario if you went out and you get swept in a four-game series. Could you imagine that if they get swept in a four-game series that they're already being swept by the Yankees in a four-game series? I'll wave the white flag at that point as an Astros fan. This shirt that I'm wearing that says current mood with a World Series trophy on it, I'm not going to have that mood anymore. That, that's going to go away. Um, so you have to go out there and do it. And I think that not letting that Rangers club have some serious confidence in that clubhouse, which they already have, and they're a little bit cocky, which they should be. They won the World Series last year. They knocked off the defending champions in seven games in a series that it looked like they were dead in after the Astros went up there and won three consecutive games in their ballpark. You don't want it to build. We know what that means for younger. Now, they're not the most, you know, they actually shouldn't even call them a younger team. They're not a younger team. They have a couple of younger players, but really their best players are all older. Um, that's why it's going to be weird how long this, this window lasts for them. Now, you know, Josh Young, who's out hurt right now, fractured wrist. Um, uh, Carter, who's quickly going to put himself up the list of unlikable uh, Rangers players. Uh, those guys are younger, but the rest of them, they're a little bit on the older side. Um, but you just don't want them to build on this and feel that they're going to, you know, build a lead. And here's the thing, too. They're going to have reinforcements coming at some point. Um, what does Max Scherzer look like? Who knows? Uh, you know, I thought he was very hittable last year. I think you're starting to see the decline there. But you could say the same for Justin Verlander. What's he going to look like when he comes back? Good news is, if you've missed that, he's coming back. Pitch Sunday in uh, Sugar Land for the Space Cowboys. His first, um, his first rehab start of what's expected to be two. So we'll see how that goes for JV in that one. But I just, I, I really think that a message needs to be, you know, relayed to these guys at this point that says, "Hey, we need these games." And if there was ever a time for me as a fan, given their record being two and six. For them to reel off three in a row, this is the time right now in this moment. Please go out there and get that done because, you know, let's just say they take one of two. Okay. They're two and six at the moment. So they leave the weekend three and eight. And you're talking about another couple of weeks before they're well above 500 and playing good baseball, hopefully, at that point. That can't continue. That cycle can't continue. You know, you don't want to see the Rangers or, you know, I know that the Angels are hot earlier or if the Mariners, whatever it might be. You don't want to see one of these teams get a six, seven-game lead over you. Because if that happens, then they maintain it for a month. Okay, well, then you've got one less month in the calendar to make that up. It's a dangerous time for the Astros right now. Not, again, not time to hit the panic button but time to have a little bit of concern for what you've seen out of them. I hope tomorrow night we'll be talking about a win against this Rangers club. I feel like uh, they should get a victory. They're facing John Gray in that one. JP France will go for the Strohs. Uh, that's a, that is a 6 5 first pitch. So, of course, again, uh, when we get done tomorrow night, you can find it right here on this YouTube channel. Thank you to every single one of you that has watched tonight live. Please, again. 
tell your friends, tell your family, tell your wife, tell everybody. If you want to go buy a, a, um, a billboard for me or, you know, a plane that pulls the, the banners, go for it. Just locked on Astros postcast, locked on Houston sports postcast. We're going to be here for it all. You can hear it on the Locked On Astros podcast, which I also suggest you go out and listen to that podcast every day as well. Great podcast uh, to keep you up to date on all things Astros. To keep you up to date on everything Houston Locked On postcast. And we're, again, we're going to do this all season long. So keep it right there on that YouTube page. Thank you for joining me for the first one tonight. It was a lot of fun. I look forward to doing it again tomorrow night. And again, Hopefully after an Astros victory. Enjoy the rest of your Friday night. We'll see you tomorrow.